Hey everyone, Jump Rope Warriors. Uh, I just got finished a beast of a jump rope workout involving just double unders. I did 550 unbroken double unders in a ladder system and I was feeling so good at the end I threw in an extra 100. So the first set I did 100 double unders, the second set I did 90 and I kept decreasing all by 10 double unders all the way until the point I was doing uh, 10 double unders and then as I said I was just feeling good at the end of it intense exercise it can make you really feel good so I threw in an extra 100 uh, so this is a short but very intense and fantastic jump rope workout um, last night I got an email from a young kid who is learning double unders at the moment and this guy was very disheartened I could tell by the tone of his writing and very soon I'm going to have an awesome double under tutorial coming out. This guy at his school, he has a jump rope coach and the coach is telling him essentially that his technique is the only technique to do double unders and this kid is having a very hard time learning how to do them. Sometimes I feel a little bit kind of worried when someone tells you their technique is the only way or their technique is the best. In terms of physical activity especially, for example, the length of our arms, our legs, it can affect the way we can perform a move. Just like a boxer, for example, a boxer with long arms, they can fight in a different way than someone who has shorter arms. We have, and fighters with different heights, they have to use that in different ways. Um, I think about baseball, I remember Ken Griffey Jr. when he was batting, his stance was very unusual. A lot of people critiqued him. It worked for him and then it worked for a lot of other people. Pitchers, I remember, I used to love baseball. The Oakland A's pitcher, Dennis Eckersley. He had that incredible sidearm. A lot of people mocked him and said it was crazy, but it was effective for him. And then other people started doing that as well. Michael Johnson, the American runner. Remember people used to make fun of his very upright running technique. It worked for him. And then other people also started putting that into practice. All right, well, I'll leave it there. Uh, I'll leave you with this full entire workout. Thanks for watching, everyone. Your dream is possible. Your dream is possible. But not only is it important that you believe and begin to know that it's possible for you to live your dream as you run toward it, but I've done something that I want to share with you called Choosing Your Future. In fact, I've developed a set of tapes talking about how to begin to create your own reality by choosing your future. And not only is it important for you to know it's possible for you to choose your future, but it's necessary that you work on yourself, that you develop yourself. It's necessary that you get the energy drainers out of your life. People who don't want anything, people who are not striving, people who are not challenging themselves, people who It's necessary to know that everybody won't see it, that everybody won't join you, that everybody won't have the vision. It's necessary to know that, that a lot of people like to complain, but they don't want to do anything about their situation, that you are an uncommon breed. You know, you have to know within yourself that I can do this. Even if no one else sees it for me, I must see it for myself. That's necessary. It's also, ladies and gentlemen, necessary that you be creative when you're working on your ideas, that you understand the importance of, of changing up, of readjusting your strategies. Many times we can have a great idea, but if you're not advancing it in the right way and things don't happen, you become discouraged and think the idea doesn't work. No, that's not true. It's necessary that we become creative. I remember when I was in New York walking down the street 
And a guy approached me and said, hey, mister, can I shine your shoes? And I said, no, I'm in a hurry. I don't have time. I kept walking. Someone else said, hey, man, your shoes look cluddy. May I shine your shoes? I said, no, I don't have time. I'm sorry, I'm busy. And I was walking fast, and many people solicited me for my business. And then finally, a young man stepped in front of me, and he said, excuse me. And he started counting, 97, 98, 99, 100. He said, sir? I said, yes. He said, come here, please. I said, what is it? He said, today is my birthday. And every year, just to thank God for another year of life, the 100th person who passes my shoe shine stand, I offer them a free shoe shine. Would you give me the honors? I said, why, sure. I got up on the shoe shine stand, George, and I sat there, and, and he shined my shoes diligently. And when I got down, I looked at them. They were sparkly. And I was walking away, and I said, thank you. And I stopped. I said, excuse me, but how much do you usually charge? He said, only $2. I said, I tell you what, today's your birthday. Here's five. Keep the change. He said, thank you. As I was walking away, looking in the opposite direction of other people coming, he started counting again. 97, 98, 99, 100. <laughs> it's necessary that you be flexible, that you are always thinking of how can I improve this better. This is a customer-driven economy. It's necessary for you to always explore various ways in which you can improve the quality of service that you're providing for the people in your organization. I remember something, a major company had talked about the extra value service they were providing for their customers. And the lady who had the news conference summarized it this way. She said, it's not our intention to satisfy our customers or to please our customers. Our intention is to amaze them. It's necessary if you're going to compete today that you look for ways to amaze your customers by being one of those individuals that keep your commitments, that keep your word, that's relentless. It's necessary as you work with the people that you bring into your organization that they see that you are a good example of a person to work with because you model integrity and determination and ambition and truth and honesty and the way in which you conduct business. The next step is that is you, that is you, that no one can do it for you but you. And even though you face disappointments, even though you will experience some setbacks, it goes with the territory. You must understand that. I remember I was playing a game with my nine-year-old son, John Leslie, and I beat him 10 straight games in a game called Connect Four. And finally, I said, John Leslie, I'm bored. I don't want to play you anymore. And I got up. I said, I'm ready to go to sleep now. And repeat after me, please. Let's say to this together. It's not over until I win. John Leslie said, no, you can't go now, Dad. I said, why? He said, it's not over until I win. That was his attitude. We sat down and we played several other games. And finally, after the 11th game, John Leslie won, and he got up and he yawned, and he said, I'm ready to go to sleep now. And I'm saying to you, what if all of us took that attitude after we face a rejection and a no, or we have a meeting and no one shows up, or somebody say, you can count on me, and they don't come through? What if we have that kind of attitude, the cause repossessed, nobody believes in you, you've lost again and again and again, the lights are cut off, but you're still looking at your dream, reviewing it every day and say to yourself, it's not over until I win. Life will yield to you. Now here's the next step. Repeat after me, please. It's possible. I can live my dream. It's necessary. I work on myself. Surround myself with winners. Become creative. It's me. I've got to make it happen. It's not over until I win. The next thing that's important to know, yes, it's possible that you can choose your future and direct the course of your life as you run toward your dream. 
It's necessary that you have goals, that you write those goals down, that you plan, that you think constantly of how you can begin to improve what it is that you're doing. If it's your presentations, if it's your recruiting skills, whatever that is, it's also necessary that you look for ways to always find a way to pull it out when everybody else thinks that you are defeated. That you've got to take personal responsibility to know that in order to become successful, you've got to make it your personal business to do it. But the next thing, ladies and gentlemen, I want to share with you that some of you already know that it's hard. It's not easy. It's hard changing your life. It was hard. No one could have convinced me by holding on, by continuing to push forward, by continuing to run toward my dream, that one day I would have my own talk show. It's a long shot, ladies and gentlemen, from Liberty City, an abandoned building on a floor, never knowing my mother or father. It's a long shot being here with you today in this dome in Atlanta. It's a long shot. No college training, labeled, educable, mentally retarded. But I kept running toward my dream. Don't stop. Don't stop. toward your